design's a trailer hitch, it is our focus to make the installation as easy as possible. In this video, we will cover all the steps encountered when installing a trailer hitch. It's important to note that every hitch installation is different and that some or none of the following steps will be necessary depending on the vehicle. Over time, a vehicle is subjected to many different elements such as rain, snow, salt, and road grime. This can cause the threads of the well nuts to rust, making it impossible to thread the supplied bolts into the frame. In this instance, we suggest one of two solutions. For minimal rust, underbody coating, and other minor debris, we suggest using a wire brush and penetrating lubricant such as PB Blaster to clean out the nut. In some extreme cases, light scrubbing just won't do the trick. We suggest using a thread tap. Choose the correct tap by using the hardware specification chart located in the supplied instruction sheet. Use caution when threading the tap into the weld nut. It's very important when tapping out the hole that the shaft of the tap is perpendicular to the weld nut before you thread it through so that the threads will not get crossed or damaged. When there aren't enough accessible weld nuts to support a trailer hitch, it is necessary to pull the hardware inside and through the vehicle's frame rail to the correct attachment point. When applicable, Kurt supplies a fish wire tool as an easy solution to this task. There are two different techniques used in many hitch installations standard and reverse fish wire techniques. During the standard fish wire technique, insert the coiled end of the fish wire up through the mounting hole and out through the axis hole in the frame. Place the square hole spacer over the coiled end and insert it into the axis hole. Thread the bolt into the coiled end and push it into the axis hole. Pull on the opposing side of the wire and the bolt will pass through the spacer and frame giving you a solid attachment point. The reverse fish wire technique may require the mounting hole to be ground out wide enough to allow the spacer and bolt to fit through. Start by threading the carriage bolt onto the fish wire. Then, place the bolt into the mounting hole head first, feed the spacer onto the other end of the fish wire and angle it into the mounting hole. Once inside the frame, pull on the opposite side of the fish wire and the bolt will pass through the spacer and frame, giving you a solid attachment point. Curt hitches are specifically designed to conform as tight to the vehicle as possible. In order to do so, some installations require the exhaust system to be lowered. In most cases, the only thing you need to do to lower the exhaust is to separate the rubber isolator from the exhaust hanger rod. To do this, spray lubricant or soapy water mixture on each side of the isolator for ease of removal. Use a pry bar as a lever in between the back of the rubber isolator and the hanger stop. Carefully slide the isolator off the hanger rod. It is always a good idea to support your exhaust system when lowering. Use a wire hanger or ratchet strap to support the exhaust from hanging freely. Most curt hitches do not require drilling. However, there are instances when there aren't enough pre-drilled holes in the vehicle's frame rail to adequately attach the hitch. Use the hitch as a template and mark all holes that need to be drilled. Lower the hitch and drill a starter hole with a small bit. Most drilling applications are often on unibody frames. However, the steel used on normal frames can be rather hard. Drilling into them will require a cobalt drill bit with a coolant oil or grease to keep from overheating and damaging the bit. Gradually increase the size of the bit until the desired hole size is reached. You can also use a step drill to gradually enlarge the mounting hole. There are also times when it's necessary to enlarge an access hole to fit the carriage bolts into the frame. Using a die grinder, slightly elongate the hole large enough to pass the square hole spacer and carriage bolt through. There are a few instances when installing a hitch where fascia trimming is necessary to obtain proper ground clearance or to conceal the main body of the hitch. The most difficult part of fascia trimming is marking off the section of fascia that needs to be removed. We suggest using masking tape to clearly define the cut lines. This will give you the best visual representation of the area that needs to be removed. Then, use a razor knife, rotary tool, or aviator shears to carefully cut around the tape. Your choice of cutting tool may be dependent on the durability of the material you're cutting. A rotary tool may be best for cutting heavy duty fascia, while a razor knife may be appropriate for a thinner material to achieve a nice clean cut edge. If you're using a razor knife, be sure not to use excessive force. Score the cutting line and make multiple passes to make a nice clean cut. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to look for the custom installation video for your hitch and vehicle. If you have any questions in regards to anything towing, please visit KurtMFG.com. Kurt. The first name in towing products.